Shalom, my brothers and sisters. All praise goes to the Most High Yahweh in the name of Yahusha. Welcome to another video. I'm Brother Jedaniah. And these, this particular video is a video that's still controversial with the awakening Hebrew Yahshalites around the world and even with many others who's not awakened who pick up this book. They have trouble understanding the word made flesh, the word before there was anything else made. They have trouble understanding the relationship between Yahweh and Yahusha. They have trouble understanding how is there a Yahusha when Yahweh is one. How What is the relationship here? And so... We have to start off by understanding that the relationship between Yahweh and Yahusha and even the heavens above is found in Adam and Eve and uh, the children here on earth. When the Most High said, let us make man in our own image, he was talking about what he did above in begotten a piece of himself called it the word and that word was hidden it was he was hidden until he was his time was to be revealed on the earth brothers and sisters so and then you had the word filled up with everything that the most high filled him up with to fulfill all his will and which was to create all that he Desired him to create, including the angels, including Adam and Eve and, and the earth and everything. This is what the Father pointed his express image to do while he sits on his throne. So, when you look at the relationship between Yahweh and Yahusha, uh, the Most High made himself a helpmeet. Like, took a piece of himself and had a helper to obey all his will. And so he took that same image, made Adam, took Eve out of Adam as a help me to Adam. And though the, the two are one, they do have the distinct separate characteristics, but they are one. Adam and Eve is one. She came out of the womb of man. That's why she's called womb man. Womb man. She's out of the womb of man. She's still a part of Adam. She's still one with Adam. We're still all one. And the same things with the Most High and Yahusha. When the word was made in an expressed form. To accomplish and help the Most High do all His will. So, with that said, we have to look at the scriptures to see if the Messiah truly existed in the Old Testament, and in, in all the uh, in the Torah and all the testimonies from different books. To see if they even mention him anywhere. Uh, and as many of us has found out that yes, he was mentioned all over the place. He's everywhere, y'all. You cannot get around it. But again, Yah and Yahusha is one. The Father is one. Yahusha is not his own uh, creator on his own that he could go off to another section of some type of create a whole new space for himself and become the Almighty sitting on his big throne and make his own angels and make his own earth and make his own people. No, he, he can't do that. He's, he's of, he's from the, the direct, 
peace of the Most High. He's, he's part of him just as we are. So uh, not even the angels can go off somewhere else and say, this is my space over here and I'm going to start creating a living hell for everybody over here. You know, Satan and his fallen angels can't do all that. And none of the other angels can, can leave off from the Most High. They're still from him too, just as we are. We can't just go off and create a new dimension somewhere and slip into it and start doing our thing, being our own God over there. It's impossible because everything comes from the one. That's why the scriptures say Yahweh is all in all. He is one and it, from everything came him. Everything came from him. All knowledge, wisdom, understanding, everything, the spirit, soul, everything came from him. All existence came from him. But he hid Yahusha within himself and then used him as his, his help me, as his express image, the so, so, submissive, obedient one. And that's what you see in man and woman. You have the dominant authority in man, and then you have the submissive, obedient, and the helpmeet, the woman. It's the same image as above. This is how you understand the relationship between Yahweh and Yahusha properly. Yes, Yahweh is Yahusha, because he he's from directly from the Most High. He's from everlasting. Then the same way you could say, yes, the woman is, Eve is of Adam. Eve is Adam. Did not that rib come out of his body? Eve is Adam. Though she has her designated duties and, and position. In the same with Yahusha. So when you hear brothers and sisters say, Yahweh is Yahusha. This is the final understanding of that, brothers and sisters. And he, he is whatever the Most High says he is in the book. Whatever he gave him, that's what's going to be given to him. You can't change it. Whatever the Most High said was going to happen with Yahusha is going to happen. You ain't going to be able to fight the Most High, change it, no matter what you disagree with. Whatever's in this book that talks about him and says this, that, and the other about Yahusha, that's what he is. And that's what he's going to be forever. You're not going to be able to stop that. Neither will Hashatan. Oh yeah, he's going to convince a lot of people that that ain't true. It ain't real. It ain't in the book. So I just wanted to explain that. And I did a video separate from this you know, about the relationship between Yahweh and Yahusha. But we still need to cover uh, a little bit more about Yahusha in the Old Testament. So right here in Baruch, chapter 3, verse 35 through 37, it says, This is our Elohim, and there shall none other be accounted of in comparison of him. None other in comparison of him. He have found out all the way of knowledge and have given it unto Jacob, his servant and to Israel that is beloved of him. Afterward, did he now this is a typo. It says she right here. This is just a typo. Y'all did he appear upon earth and was conversant with men. Do y'all see this? This is from Baruch saying that the most high Elohim. When you say Elohim, you're talking about the, the fullness of Elohim. You're talking about Yahweh and Yahweh as one. Even with the angels, when the angels came down, Yahweh spoke through them. That's part of his oneness. The same as your, you, your wife, and your kids is part of a oneness. The same thing with Jacob uh, and his son, his wife and his sons. They're a part of Yahshua. They all was him. 
all the sons of Yasharal, the one Jacob, the one Yasharal that had twelve sons, was all him. And they continued on in his name, Yasharal. The whole twelve tribes was Yasharal. There's no difference. Y'all have to understand this. There's no difference between uh, Adam or let's just put it this way. They are Adam and Eve is completely one as Yahweh and Yahusha is completely one. We are being brought into that oneness of Yahweh and Yahusha through Yahusha. And it has everything to do with the woman birthing the children with Yahusha birthing new spirits of himself. So you can see that undertone image of what's happening in the spiritual well, what's happening in the flesh between a husband and a wife and them having kids. You can see the same story unfold where the, most, where the Most High is sacrificing His Son on that tree or cross and a rod is put in His side and the water and the blood pours out just as a husband goes into his virgin wife for the first time and the water comes out and then the blood. That's the hymen being parted for the first time with the blood so you see the water and the blood there and then there's conception in course after nine months there's a birth and so the same story is in what Yahuwah put everything inside of his son and through that we are reborn through him but it's on the spiritual level Let's go to the next, uh, let's go over here to, this is the Apocalypse of Elijah, page 20, verse 8. For this reason, the Elohim of esteem, or glory, has been merciful. He sent his son to the world so that he might save us from this captivity. He did not tell an angel who came to us or an archangel or any other power, but he changed himself into human form, coming to us so that he might save us. Therefore, be for him children, he being for you a father. Remember that he has prepared for you thrones and crowns. So you're going to have thrown your thrones with his thrones. Does that mean you overtake the most high because you got a throne? No. Does that make you over the king, over uh, the king of kings because you got your crown? No. It means you are of him now and from him. You are his sons and daughters and you receiving what whatever he gave to Yahusha. Remember that he has prepared for you thrones and crowns in heaven. Remember Yahusha said, I go to prepare a place for you. For everyone who listens to me will receive the thrones and crowns among these, um, among the, those belonging to me. Those who belong to me. Now remember, Yahusha also said, I pray for those whom you gave me. And that's the ones who's going to make it into the kingdom. The true believers. Let's go over here to the first book of Adam. This is page 13. Verse 3. It again said Yahweh to Adam. All this misery that you have been made to take on yourself. Because of your transgression. Will not free you from the hand of Hashatan. And will not save you. But I will. When I shall come down from heaven and shall become flesh of your descendants and take on myself the infirmity from which you suffer, then the darkness that covered you in 
in this cave shall cover me in the grave, when I am in the flesh of your descendants, and I, who am without years, shall be subject to the reckoning of years, of times, of months, and of days, and I shall be reckoned as one of the sons of men, in order to save you. And Yah ceased to commune with Adam. So, the Most High is telling you that he, this is him come from heaven. But you got to remember, Yahusha is a part of him, so it is still him coming. This is hard to be understood by some Hebrews, some brothers out there. They think that that is stupid because they can't understand the power of Yah. They don't think about how powerful he is and what he can do. They put them in some little human box and human, in their human minds. They, they box them in because they can't understand this. So instead of them just leaving that part alone and wait for Yah to bring up the understanding, they, they, they start speaking things out of their own thoughts and their own hearts and their own minds and start the, the process of deceiving themselves and deceiving everyone else, especially within this Hebrew awakening. So you got these different books right here bearing witness to Yahusha. Now let's go to Second Esdras. Oh, sorry, y'all. Let's go to First Timothy first before we go to Second Esdras. First Timothy chapter three verse sixteen. And without controversy, great is the mystery of Elohimness. Elohim was manifest in the flesh, justifying in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the nations believed on in the world received up into esteem so it's saying Elohim was manifest in the flesh here you have another witness to the first witnesses now let's go to um, Esdras this is second Esdras Chapter 7, verse 28 through 29. For my son, Yahusha, shall be re revealed with those that be with him, and shall rejoice them that remain 400 years. After these years shall my son, Hamashiach, Messiah, die. After those years, he's going to die. And all that have the breath of life. So, what he was talking about was the apostles. And right here it says, And the world shall be turned into the old silent seven days, like as in the first beginning. So, after the apostles died, and we went into slavery, after 70 AD, it turned back into the old world, like it was in the beginning. And you could read more about the stuff, all the corruption that would come on up after that. But anyway, let, let's let's stay on point. Let's go to Enoch. Let's go to Enoch, y'all. Now let's go to First Kings first. Before we go to Enoch, First Kings. Where you at? Right here, First Kings eight, chapter eight, and twenty six through twenty seven. Okay, it says, And now, O Elohim of Yahshua, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified which thou spake unto thy servant David, my father. But will Elohim indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have builded. Shall Elohim dwell on the earth? Wow. Now he's talking about in spirit, but also in physical as we read before. So, 
Let's go to Book of Enoch now. Plenty of evidence, brothers and sisters. All right. In this particular book, um, this verse in the book that I have in my hand right now is Enoch chapter 102, verse 3. But on this particular version you see on the screen, uh, it's like on page 124 of this complete book of Enoch, standard English version, starting at verse 11 and 12. It says, In those days when he have brought a grievous fire upon you, whither will you flee, and where will you find deliverance? And when he launches forth his word against you, will you not be affrighted and fear? And all the luminaries shall be affrighted with great fear, and all the earth shall be affrighted and tremble and be alarmed. So right here it says, when he launches forth his word against you. His word was Yahusha. And you see that in the book of Adam as well, where it speaks about his word was sent. And it's talking about Yahusha. This is before he was revealed. And that's why you have other verses that talk about um, one like unto the Son of Man, you know, with uh, Meshach, Abednego, and Shadrach. Uh, when they were thrown in that fiery pit, they saw someone sit standing there with them. And they said it was one like unto the Son of Man. Or the Son of Elohim, brothers and sisters. So he always was there. He just didn't know what to look for. For the most I hid him to reveal him to those who would believe in him. All right, let's go to Enoch 46. Keep in mind, we are talking about the Word made flesh and Yah, uh, Yahusha's relationship with Yahuwah, and that he is a direct piece of Yahuwah taken out of him, just as Eve was taken out of Adam and is a direct piece of Adam. And just as Yahweh is the dominant authority, Yahusha is the submissive, obedient helper. Just as Adam is the dominant authority and the woman is the submissive, obedient helper. Same story. And the children, it reflects the angels as being the helper of both. Uh, the parents and the angels is the help of, helper of both Yahweh and Yahusha. So let's read 1 through 5. And then we're going to drop down to verse 48. I mean, uh, drop down to chapter 48. Sorry about that. All right, 1 through 5. And there I saw one who had a head of days and his head was white like wool and with him there was another whose face had the appearance of a man and his face was full of grace like one of the holy angels and i asked one of the holy angels who sent who went with me and showed me all the secrets about that son of man remember they said he was hidden who he was and from where he was and why he went with the head of days. Remember, we as Yashara is a reflection of the sun as well on the earth. For we have been hidden from the world and we will be revealed in the right time, brothers and sisters. So we are, we are like a reflection of Yahusha. But just as in the book of Daniel it says, Yahusha shall get the kingdom and dominion, it also says the saints shall get the kingdom and dominion. And the saints are the children of Yahshua. 
And he answered me and said to me, This is the Son of Man who has righteousness and with whom righteousness dwells. He will reveal all the treasures of that which is secret. For Yahuwah of spirits has chosen him, and through uprightness his lot has surpassed all others in front of Yahuwah of spirits forever. And this son of man whom you have seen will rouse the kings and the powerful from their resting places and the strong from their thrones and will loose the reins of the strong and will break the teeth of the sinners. And he will cast down the kings from their thrones and from their kingdoms for they do not exalt him and do not praise him and do not humbly acknowledge from where their kingdom was given to them. Now see that? This is just speaking on who Yahusha is, what the Father put in him, all his will that he had to have to fulfill and he's committed to, and he's fulfilling all things. Yahshua was to do the same. There is a place for him as a help me on earth to the Most High, married unto the Most High, to fulfill all the will of the Father on the earth. We, it, it's like we are the foreshadow of Yah. We was the foreshadow of Yahusha to come on the earth. So let's drop down to 48 and 4 through 12. He will be a staff to the righteous and the holy, so that they may lean on him and not fall. And he will be the light of the nations, and he will be the hope of those who grieve in their hearts. All those who dwell upon the dry ground will fall down and worship in front of him. I think I was supposed to start from right here, up here. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute. All right, let's start with verse one. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. And in that, oops, wait a minute. And in that place, I saw an in, inexhaustible spring of righteousness, and many springs of wisdom surrounded it, and all the thirsty drank from them, and were filled with wisdom. And their dwelling was with the righteous and the holy and the chosen. And at that hour, that son of man was named in the presence of the of Yahweh of spirits and his name brought to the head of days. Now, remember, they spoke the same thing in Daniel. Uh, chapter seven. As a witness. Even before the sun and the constellations were created, before the stars of heaven were made, his name was named in front of Yahweh's spirits. You see that? Before all this was created, he was named. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. He will be a staff to the righteous and the holy and so that they may lean on him and not fall. And he will be the light of the nations and he will be the hope of those who grieve in their hearts. All those who dwell upon the dry ground will fall down and worship in front of him. And they will bless and praise and celebrate with psalms the name of Yahweh of spirits. And because of this, he was chosen and hidden in front of him. Before the world was created and forever. But. Now. You could see us being hidden. Of course we're in punishment too. We're being, we've been hidden. Before the world to come. Where Jacob is going to be the head of the world to come. And Esau is the end of this world. 
We are the beginning of the, of the world to come. So we have been hidden from the eyes of the heathens until the appropriate time. We will be revealed again, but this time in the power of the second covenant where we would do the law says commandments automatically before all the nations. So you can see this duality of Yahusha and Yahshua brothers and sisters. But the wisdom of Yahweh of spirits has revealed him to the the uh, Kodesh and the righteous. For he has kept safe the lot of the righteous. For they have hated and rejected this world of iniquity or lawlessness. And all its works and its ways they have hated in the name of Yahweh of spirits. For in his name they are saved. And he is the one who will require their lives hallelujah let's see I'm going to read down to 12 nope wait a minute is there a 12 nope <laughs> and in those days the kings of the earth and the strong who possess the dry ground will have downcast faces because of their works of their hands for on the day of their distress and trouble they will not save themselves and i will give them into the hands of my chosen ones like straw in the fire and like lead in water so they will burn in front of the righteous and sink in front of the kodesh and no trace will be found of them and on that day i mean on and on the day of their trouble there will be rest on the earth and they will fall down in front of him and will not rise and there will be no one who will take them with his hands and raise them for they deny Yahweh of spirits and his Messiah. May the name of Yahweh of spirits be Baruch blessed. Hallelujah. So these books expound on the same story that we seen with Yahshua Raw. It, it's, it's not exactly the same because Yahusha didn't sin. But you could see the duality of uh, what was supposed to take with Yahshua Raw being seen in Yahusha who came to fulfill all the laws and set things straight. Not just with Yahshua Raw, but with Adam. And everything that was busted up with him. <laughs> okay. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. Alright. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18 verses 13 through 16. For while they were disbelieving all things by reason of the enchantments. Upon the destruction of the firstborn. They confessed the people to be God's son. Or Yah's son. So you have this duality of. Yah's son from above, the first, and Yah's children from below is the first. So, uh, you have Yah's son, Yahusha, and you have Yah's son, Yahshara, the twelve tribes being talked about. For while peaceful, silent, and wrapped all things, and night in her own swiftness was in the mid-course. Thine all-powerful word leapt from heaven out of the royal throne. You hear that? A stern warrior into the midst of the doomed land, bearing as a sharp sword thine unfeigned commandment. And standing it filled all things with death. And while it touched the heaven, it trod upon the earth. Thine all-powerful word leapt from, leapt from heaven out of the royal throne. A stern warrior, he was there, brothers and sisters. More evidence and more proof of Yahweh and Yahusha's relationship and his position, his place. As the helper, helpmeet of Almighty Yah. Submissive and obedient 
to the very end. At least the end of this um, fleshly stage of our lives. Okay, let's go to Genesis. So now, when you come back to Genesis, in here where it says, And Elohim said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now you have the understanding of what it's saying here. And he gives you the clue right here. So Elohim created man in his own image. And in the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. What did he mean by that? He meant how. He begot his son out of himself. As the word. As the high priest. As the helper and help meet, as his voice, as his tool of creation, his right arm. Male and female. So when you look at male and female, it doesn't mean necessarily in heaven. It's men and a man and a woman up there. It means dominant and authoritative. And submissive and obedient. When you're dealing with spiritual. The spiritual side of this above. Whereas Yahweh is the dominant authority figure. And the express image of him is the help me. The submissive obedient. And so you have that same thing here with the male and female. It's the same image. And Hashatan has been trying to destroy that image ever since. He's, he, he went after the woman. And it's the woman that caused the male to fall from his dominance over the earth. And his authority. Because the woman fell out of her submissiveness. Her obedience and her help meekness. So Hashatan tried to do the same with Yahusha. Try to get him to fall out of his position and place. But he couldn't. But anyway. This goes right along with. John, let's go to John, and all these people out here claiming that the New Testament is is fake, is false, it's the heathens who wrote it, because they have no understanding, just like Peter wrote in his book, those who trip up on Paul's, Paul's messages and, and letters and they wrestle with all the other scriptures. They err in all the other scriptures, y'all. And they do. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with Elohim. And the word was Elohim. What does that mean? The word was Elohim. It's the same. Go back to Adam and Eve. You look, if you had a wife with you. Your, your husband. She was taken out of the man. She is still man. Yahusha was taken out of Yahuwah. He is still Yahuwah. Though he is the son and though she is the woman. The female, the wife of that, of that oneness. This is what this means, brothers and sisters. The same is with. The same was in the beginning with Elohim. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and, and the life was the light of men. The light of men. Wow. Brothers and sisters. 
Let's drop down to 10 through 14. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of Elohim, even to them that believe on his name, which we, which were born, not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of Yah. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his esteem the esteem as of the only begotten of the Father, the only begotten of the Father, full of esteem and truth, grace and truth, the only begotten of the Father, and he is the only begotten of the Father, just as he was begotten of Adam. She's the only begotten of Adam. All the rest are offspring of the two. Just as we are the offspring of Yahuwah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start, stop right here. Make this part, part one. I'm going to continue on. And we're going to try to wrap things up in part two. If not, I may make a part three. But this is important information to understand. This is part of your salvation. This is a part of you. The revealing of Yahweh and Yahusha, who they are, how they work together, who we are, and how we work together with Him. What's going on in the heavens is what's going on here on earth. Which the father once he's been trying to accomplish that through Yahshua and what duties we are coming back into. He's bringing all this out so y'all can understand and prepare yourselves to not be deceived by the enemy. The enemy is working hard through this awakening to destroy, to destroy this understanding that is. It's really simple if you tune out all the garbage. First, you have to understand the garbage that's coming into you through these different people. That's telling you all these different things. Put that down. Pick up the book. Sit down at the table and read this yourself. And let it be revealed to you. By the Most High. Let the Most High reveal the same thing, and He will. And if you have heard, and you have believed what you heard today, say hallelujah, because many is not going to accept what has been put together by Yah to be spoken through this channel. And many has not. They have turned away from this channel. Because of what's being spoken here. They want to hear lies. A lot of them. A lot of people forget that most of the Yashualites is going to be gnashing, at, gnashing of teeth. They are going to the other channels where they belong. Where lies is being taught to them. Just like with the Levitical, the, the dietary law, the video made. They would rather receive witchcraft and spells cast on them and lies than the truth that was right before them. I seen them protecting these people, these liars and deceivers. And there's many of them on here, y'all. There's so many of them, and they they not preaching the fullness of this word. Turn to Yahweh. Receive his free gift of salvation, brothers and sisters, through his son, 
whom he sacrificed on that tree, that cross, that you may be saved. And once you have received that, start the process of converting to walking in the ways of righteousness. See, right now, while we're in the process of uh, the fullness of the second covenant coming in, when Yahweh shall return, we still need the book. We still need to read. We still need our sins to be revealed to us. But when he returned, he's coming with the law, such commands, put in my minds and hearts to do them. And he's going to wash all of our sins clean. We won't remember them no more. You won't remember how you, how to do sin anymore. It's going to be washed out of you. You're going to be a new thing. And you're going to do the law, such commandments automatically by the power of the Yah's spirit in you. Because you're going to be adopted completely as his son or uh, converted and changed completely as one of his sons when when Yahweh shall return those who get caught up in the air with him is going to be changed then he's going to draw the rest of the one of the Israelites and those that be with them back into the land and the flesh and he's going to repopulate and rebuild Yahweh Sharal and they going to live in the fullness of the second covenant with the law, such commandments in their minds and hearts, and they will do them in the land, and the most high gonna make a covenant with the land, brothers and sisters. Prepare for this. Endure to the end. Keep your crown and your robes of righteousness. Don't let no one steal a hot time is at work through everyone he can find around you. Even you. Don't let yourself get in the way. Say your prayers every day. Throughout the day. And trust. And have faith. In what you read in here. And you won't be led astray. He will reveal. The works of darkness. And the words of darkness. That you may be listening to. From other people. All praises to the Most High Yahweh for revealing his relationship between him and his son. And how that correlates with Adam and Eve, our husband and wife. And how that correlates with Yahweh and Yahshua's relationship. All praises. See you on part two.